Hello, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of Pop Talks. Um, I am Andy Foreman, and I'm here with my co-host. Jason Cox, right here. And we are sitting here with one of the JPM regulars, Ben Jenkins. Say hello to the people, Ben. Hey, folks. They promised me in here with candy, but there's not any, so I thought I'd stay for the podcast anyway. Uh, should I have brought candy? I could brought candy. If you would have let me know, I would have brought some. Yeah. I kid, I kid. All right, I'm sure we got up. plenty of candy. It's post-Christmas season. There's a bunch of leftovers laying around. Everything. Well, this episode's topic is really reward enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and just like that, we're going to get into it, because this topic is too good to put off. <laughs> we are talking about some of the greatest films ever made, depending on your uh, perspective. Um <laughs> Your like your perspective is like you live in opposite day or something. Your yeah. perspective is that you have zero vision whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you are blind and deaf, they are some of the best movies ever made. But they are the Star Wars prequels. Mm -hmm. I think everybody at this table is familiar with those films. Um, I know what they are. Yeah, <laughs> so have you seen them? <laughs> They're movies that came before. Yeah. So let's just get into it. What was your first? Um, encounter with this trilogy of amazing films and did you let me just start off with a question did you realize they were shit to begin with or did you have to like come to that realization <laughs> i'll never forget my first encounter with the prequels we my family got our first computer in 1998 and it was the coolest thing ever we like spent all day on the internet and one of the first things that we did was go to starwars.com and we downloaded the trailer nice. for the phantom menace and it took like 10 minutes to yeah, download because streaming media was not what it is today no when nothing. was that 98 99 e about <clears throat> then yeah somewhere around there yeah and we watched it we're like whoa this looks cool sith and black and red face and <laughs> all kinds of other stuff racing oh it's awesome and then we had to download it again and just to watch it another time because it looked interesting and then mm -hmm. we saw the movies and I was nine when The Phantom Menace came out, and even I remember thinking, this isn't Star Wars, it's not even enjoyable. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and a couple weeks later, my parents, who were like, must have had Phantom Menace blinders on, because they enjoyed uh, it for some other reason, were driving past the movie theater on a weekend. They're like, Ben, do you want to go see Star Wars again? And I, me, a nine-year-old, little nine -year -old stupid little kid, said, do we have to? <laughs> wow. And I had, like, grown up on Star Wars. I had, like, oh, sure. eat, breathed, and crapped Darth Vader and Luke <laughs> and Princess Leia and all that fun stuff. So for me to, like, reject it so out of hand, I think yeah. gives some measure of just how bad The Phantom Menace was. Yeah. I mean, I, I like that you brought that up, though, because I was, I was thinking about uh, talking about all of the these current sequels and everything. Like, I haven't seen uh, Last Jedi yet, but I saw, obviously, uh, Force Awakens, and I... What I can say that that did right was that I, it felt like a Star Wars movie. It had that intangible quality of being Star Wars. and It felt comfortable. Yeah, you know, it felt comfortable and familiar, and it felt like actually Star Wars, not just uh, someone's very best approximation of Star Wars, but like it felt like legit Star Wars. And I didn't get that sensation watching any of the prequels. So that's like an important distinction I think to make there is that like those movies just didn't feel like it. It felt like someone just trying really hard to do Star Wars without actually doing Star Wars. Yeah, it was so. a parody of itself in a lot of ways. Sure, like the yeah. Over the top lightsaber battles and the, the CGI in place of any sort of character development. I mean, outside of, you know, for one movie, Liam Neeson and then the rest of them, Ewan McGregor, it's really hard, I think, to latch on to any of these characters. Mm -hmm. And Liam Neeson is the most boring man in the galaxy. In the <laughs> oh, no, I think that's Sam Jackson. I, I mean, he would have good hair and a ponytail, but, uh, that's you know. True. So. <laughs> what was your first encounter with the prequels? Because you're the youngest. One here. Yeah, Ideally, uh, the prequels should be like your were, Star Wars. Did your mom go into labor while she was watching uh, Phantom, Phantom Menace? Menace? No. Um, <laughs> that's dark. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, was there like an immaculate force conception? <laughs> Is the force your real father, Andy? Uh, no, I, no, I don't you're, have that bad a bowl haircut. You're just, <laughs> oh, thank God. You're, you're just a cluster of midichlorians. Yeah. Um, no, my first encounter was uh, like in third grade. I went on the Star Tours ride yes. at Disneyland. Yes. And I was like, this is fucking awesome my favorite ride i was like this is awesome classic so star tour I, yes between that and my first viewing of galaxy quest okay <laughs> in the same summer because we did the disneyland trip and we also we watched galaxy quest as a family yeah i was like i'm really into this sci-fi stuff like I, I'm, I was like this is interesting i feel like me. this whole genre is going places <laughs> yeah but i was like this is kind of interesting <laughs> to me so like right when school started um around that year i for like a week Every day after school, my grandpa would pick me up, and he had the original trilogy on VHS, and he had The Phantom Menace on VHS. Mm. So, 
he evidently stopped buying them when he watched The Phantom Menace. <laughs> um, As many of us did. But um, I, th- I think I have Phantom Menace on VHS. I'm I do too, because I have it from my grandpa. Yeah. But um, I remember watching the first three and being like, Jesus, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, this is like... <clears throat> when you first watch Star Wars, especially as a kid, and you don't like have a, like, a real conception of what it is, yeah. it is like the most mind-blowing shit you've oh, ever yeah. seen in your entire life. Like... The music, the way it introduces you to the story, the the characters, mm-hmm. you know, even just like the the sound effects, yeah. like oh, yeah. they just draw you in. Mm-hmm. And um, those were some of the first things I ever saved up money for. Was like the um, stormtrooper blaster. Oh, nice. And Han yeah. Solo's blaster and a lightsaber. Those nice. were the first things I ever saved up for. But I remember my grandpa goes, "Well, you know, there are prequels to this." Okay. Because I was like, "Are there more?" And he's like, "Well, there are prequels to this." So I remember. Watching The Phantom Menace on VHS and being so incredibly bored. Mm. Like, not embarrassed, sure. not even... I was confused, yeah. Yeah. but when you're a kid, you you get used to being confused by movies. <laughs> sure. Because when you're, like, nine, yeah. you're, you're like, oh, well, I'm nine. I'm just going to be confused yeah. by movies. <laughs> yeah. You know by, what I mean? By life, really. I'm just saying. For like, another ten years, probably. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. If it wasn't, like, a At Spider-Man least. or an X-Men movie, like... Yeah. I was, I'm not shocked that yeah. I didn't, like, follow a plot. Mm. Um, and I could follow plots pretty well. I watched sure. a lot of movies. But yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, like, when you're nine, you're like, oh, this is for adults. Mm-hmm. It's not for adults. Yeah. It's just bad. But you can't <laughs> yeah. realize that it's when you're a It's not for anyone. And you, can't, and you can't follow something that's not there, which is so blatantly the case with <laughs> Phantom Menace and especially Attack of the Clones, where it just feels like two incoherent movies with events that don't really have any sort of cause and relationship well, it's, really with each other. You're about. watching... <laughs> I, and I recently rewatched these because The Last Jedi came out and I had to do a Star Wars marathon. So I've wa- rewatched all the Star Wars movies recently. Yeesh. Yeah. In in order, uh, one one through six. Mm, no, actually, seven. I I watched the prequel trilogy backwards just because I was like, I think I might put on uh, Episode Three while I was doing homework. Because it's like it's a Star Wars movie that you can watch, but you don't have to watch. Yeah. So like I can be like typing an essay and it can just be on in the background. Because I know if I put on the original trilogy, I'm gonna just watch it. Yeah. Uh, but then I was like, well, I still have more of an essay to write. So I just put on two and then one. Mm-hmm. So I watched them backwards, and it was like, Jesus Christ. These are, <laughs> these are so misguided is the problem. You watch these things, and they make no sense to me as like a 20-year-old now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. as, a, as a nine-year-old, I was like, well, I'll understand it when I'm older. And yeah. now I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, you do understand it, and you understand that it is just poorly done. Yes, it's it's poorly put together, and the most fascinating thing to me is um, the behind the scenes footage of the Phantom Menace because oh, okay. it's George Lucas before he was like crushed by fan criticism. Okay, so it's like <laughs> ideal, it's slightly idealistic George Lucas. Yeah, but he, he's standing around, and this is actually the most interesting thing to me is um the making of the Phantom Menace documentary. Yeah. Um, if anybody here hasn't seen it and is interested in like filmmaking should watch it because you see george lucas standing around and he's saying all these like weird demands of like jar obviously there's the jar jar is the key to all this he's the funniest character but then he's also he has these giant storyboards and he has two different colored highlighters and he's like this will be cgi this will be real cgi real and it cuts to all the like producers and the you know visual effects artists, and they're all standing around just kind of looking confused, but they're not <laughs> saying anything, well, because yeah. it's George Lucas. That's yeah. an uncanny and, George Lucas, by the way. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> there's, 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 there's plenty more where that came from. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we're going to hear more of that. Yeah. This hour. <laughs> but it, they're, they're all standing around saying nothing, mm. and to me what makes the prequel so fascinating is it is a singular vision. It's a very poor yeah. singular vision, yeah. but it is a singular vision. <laughs> it's a singular, uninformed vision. Uninformed of what audiences want or what actual fans, like straight up fans of the Star Wars universe, uh, we're looking for in a series of prequels. Well, the one thing I want to know about The Phantom Menace is, why start there? Why mm-hmm. start with yeah. Anakin as a child? Mm-hmm. That's too far back. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, The Hobbit doesn't start with, like, Bilbo Baggins as a teenager. Yeah, being born. <laughs> yeah, it's not like, and here's Bilbo Baggins as a teenager. Yeah, right. And here's him going to Hobbit High School. <laughs> and here's him getting laid in the back of, like, a Hobbit carriage or whatever on Hobbit prom night. Oh, you just ruined my favorite children's literature. Yeah, really. Uh, it's, it's okay. Bilbo probably did not get laid. He didn't get out of the house that much. Oh. 
fair point. But um, he just smoked his pipe. All the time. Puppets just kind of spring out of the ground or something, right? Oh, wait, no, that's Borg. Yeah, they're like potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> they are, and they do like potatoes. Precisely. Precisely. Well, evidently, Darth Vader sprang out of nowhere. Because, <laughs> because they had the idea that Anakin was born of a virgin birth. They okay. d- we didn't plan this segue, folks. I swear that yeah, was yeah, a yeah. thousand percent off That's okay. how professional we are. Uh, okay, I'm just randomly having a thought, and it may be something we need to edit out later. But okay, what if, let's say, George Lucas thinks of himself as God in the Star Wars universe, right? Mm-hmm. And the Force is maybe sort of a, a, it's a God, or a God-like yeah. Force and in the universe. His. So yeah, so it's maybe will. he's Anakin Skywalker's father in his own mind because he is the god of the Star Wars universe, and this is his only begotten son. Like, Shit, you just I mean, gave this way too many layers. And oh, now we George, now we have to go all George, Freudian on it. I don't know. I'm just curious. George's is it... will be done. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Kingdom> Come. <laughs> no, I, I. You never know what's going on inside that guy's head <laughs> because, like, it's so funny because, like, they have they have footage of him on the first day of writing the script. And he'll just sit down there, and if you look in the background, he has screenwriting for dummies, no. like, on the desk. Oh, boy. <laughs> but he has, like, and you know what I love? This is totally off, like, th- I can't criticize this, because this is how you would start a script, but he's writing on, like, yellow legal pad, and it's, yeah. like, episode one, back then it was called The Beginning, and then it's, like, um, fade in space and then i was like i was like no fucking shit like fade in space <laughs> have you it's fully sp- faded in if it's space i, I know mean, but i just, really just love, speckled light i just love yeah. it fade in space like it's a fucking star wars movie you could have just skipped over i mean i know you need that to like break down the shot list and everything but Either. it's still like i just love that like fade in space it's like the easiest shit he ever wrote yeah, in his right. entire life can i just say that the beginning would actually be a way better title than the phantom menace mm. who is the phantom what is he menacing and who are being menaced i, mean, I don't know i guess it's Darth Sidious, but yeah, that's just not a good title well, that's the movie. thing is he's so phantasmic that we can't quite lay a grasp on okay. who or what the phantom is fantastic phantasmic with a ph yeah oh yes <laughs> can we start at the beginning with this the title crawl is all wrong. It's all like the separatist and the federation, oh. like the trade federation are separatist droids. Yeah, it gets into like the trade, most boring portion of a like a trade route. Po- yeah, a political history. Yeah, like it, yes, yeah, it it reads like something out of like a cartography history or like a book Wikipedia or article or something like a. Well, it's like the Wikipedia summary of like the the Star Wars EU novel you would never read. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. And if it was, and if this was Wikipedia, it'd be filled with a bunch of hyperlinks that I could click on and understand what the fuck's a trade federation. Yes, yeah. the rest yeah. of what is a trade federation? Right. Right. Yeah, so many yeah. words in that text crawl should be underlined so I can click on them and read an article to explain what they are. Yeah, the beauty of the first movie is that it's, and by the first I mean the 1977 mm-hmm. one that we call a New Hope these days is mm-hmm. that it was all right there in the title crawl. Yeah. It was yeah. so it appealed to. It, these basic ideas of humanity and storytelling that you could understand without having to get into the hyper complexities of Everybody galactic knows trade. What rebels yeah. are and an evil empire. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Easy. It, it, okay. yeah, it's a high concept that everybody can. Uh, it's super accessible. You've seen, yeah. you've kind of seen this before, probably in mm-hmm. something, or you've read it before, or whatever. Because I think back in the seventies, people read books or something. I don't know. Yeah. So what's that? What's a book? It's uh, it's like video games, but it, 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 makes, <laughs> it, it makes no beep, beep, beeps. Never ending story. <laughs> Can we talk about some of the good stuff in the Phantom Menace? What little there is. Natalie Portman. Even that's pretty bad. Yeah, pretty no, stuff. never mind. You and McGregor. <laughs> yes. Actually, we... I mean, you guys know the the overly done lightsaber battles, but I gotta be like, they're pretty. They're fun cool. to watch, especially yeah, they're especially pretty... as a child. It's like wow, they can do action in these movies too. Because you you would think of like Star Wars as being sort of like a sci fi action thing, but there's not really that much like physical conflict in any right. of the original movies the so. only lightsaber battle in the 77 one is between uh, like an elderly man and a man who can't see yeah <laughs> you know they you've probably seen this on youtube recently but they just some fans like recut that with like oh where it's like super sped up and, yeah oh. or obi-wan no. actually looks like he's not a geriatric yeah. crazy wizard no i <laughs> like the idea of him being on his last legs and just stalling yeah i like that idea mm. but the, the lightsaber battles are cool. They go on for way too long. There's too mm. much stupid bullshit around the lightsaber battles. Like that big hallway with the with the force... Uh, the force field. Yeah, yeah, the force field. Oh, that's just yeah. open for no reason. And it's just a fucking video game. Yeah, yeah. It's just a video I game mean, level. I get that it's supposed to kill Qui-Gon, so it serves that plot purpose. But yeah, it, it's but like, what, what are these? What are they doing here? What is our... What story function <laughs> yeah. do they serve? Why are these not doors? Yeah. Qui-Gon shouldn't be a character. <laughs> it should have been Obi-Wan... 
and Anakin. Mm-hmm. And I, people are like, well, Qui-Gon dies. I'm like, yeah, I know. He shouldn't fucking die. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he shouldn't neither, be there. And Darth Maul should not have died either. Mm-hmm. They should have had a villain that went through the entire series. The problem with the prequels, oh, yeah. uh, well, one of the many problems with the prequels. <laughs> is that the each, problem, because there's that, just one. Is that each fucking movie has a different villain in it. You have Darth Maul, who does nothing. You have Count Dooku, who does nothing. Who's Christopher Lee's head CGI'd on a stuntman who does nothing. <laughs> and, then, and then you have... I guess Anakin in the third one as the actual villain. Sort of. Which well, is what you've been waiting for. Who's really just a lackey for uh, Palpatine. Really. I know, but that's he's, like the yeah. villain you want to see. Because yeah. they Palpatine, advertise he's like these barely things. In it, yeah, Palpatine yeah. does run throughout the whole thing, but he's like but, such a... like He doesn't really matter until episode three when yeah. he's like used reasonably well. Yeah, 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 when he's a meme. Yeah, it's... Yeah, he's, <laughs> it's I like, am the Senate. Are yeah, oh, you threatening me? That's the Jedi. It, it, it's less of a... Yeah, it's less of like a, 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 a villain's journey or whatever. It's more like a light switch that they flick on in the third movie like yeah. oh hey we've only got one of these left better turn him the into first evil two, he's basically an easter egg at first and then yeah, becomes right. a character later yeah, the first yeah. two don't matter mm. is the problem the first two do not matter in any way like that they don't serve any story purpose and I get yeah. they're like well in the Attack of the Clones you get to see the Clone Wars you don't get to see the Clone Wars because yeah. they skip over it like they show <laughs> yeah. a couple of CGI like ships get blown out mm. of, in the desert and that's about it. Yeah. That's nobody nobody I care about is on the ships or blowing the ships yeah. up. It's just like... You know what would have been really badass is if the Clone Wars was actually like like a military movie, but of the Clone Wars. Like just taking place like in the trenches or on the front lines of the actual... Like that could have been And Obi-Wan and, and Anakin different. were like generals or something. Yeah. I mean, that's way cooler than what we got. And like, yeah. Make, make, like, and make like Boba Fett one of the frontline soldiers, and at the mm-hmm. end he's just like, F this, and I'm gonna do something meaningful with my <laughs> life, like hunt boundaries or whatever, and then like give him a meaningful character arc that like informs where he is. And Yeah. Like, but no, they decided to make him a whiny little kid who, <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. He died. He died. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, in The Phantom Menace, the problem is, is it goes so shit so fast. Mm-hmm. That opening is semi-promising the opening where they try and kill uh Gwygon and obi-wan oh. I mean, it's not great but it's what, like with gas or whatever it yeah was? well you know what i love is that they gas they, they turn on the gas and then like 30 seconds later they're like oh they must be dead mm. just leave it on till now yeah like it's I they're mean, jedi knights why like, are they in such a hurry to check on yeah. these dead bodies also why don't they have like cameras that they can just look and be like oh there they are yep yeah, dead definitely dead but they get no life signs they get to the <laughs> like they've got spaceships but they don't have cameras the camera noise that you did there that was the nicest touch. I, yeah. that, that really gives a character that's them changing the channel back from like whatever sports uh, event they were watching and like girls 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 with his <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, or like some kind of weird alien croquet tournament or you know, something like that. You know what shocks me about this movie? Is yep. how well yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> it's how early Jar Jar Binks comes in. Mm. There is no time to enjoy this movie before this guy fucking ruins it. <laughs> we've 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 held off a long time before confronting the eight hundred pounds Wampa in the room and <laughs> here he is, folks. It is atrocious. Like you hear about like people, it's like this casting ruined the movie or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like Sofia Coppola ruined The Godfather 3. But, like, The Godfather 3 isn't, like, unwatchable. Phantom Menace is unwatchable because of this character. <laughs> like, it is atrocious. Yeah. The voice, the look, like, it's all Yeah, the off. lack of relevance to anything. Yeah, and also, then they go to this weird underwater planet. Or, not underwater planet, but, like, underwater, underwater city. civilization, yeah. yeah. With... Boss Nass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it is like <laughs> had to do it. I had to. <laughs> it is the most embarrassing thing I have ever seen in a film. It's so irrelevant on so many levels. The worst thing about it to me is, and always will be, the fact of like how glaringly racist it is. I remember as a kid thinking, I don't get why everyone hates him so much. Yeah, he's goofy, but you know the original films had three PO, even Yoda is kind of a yeah, Yoda's funny old dumb prank. in the beginning. Like, yeah, he's a dumb old like guy uh, before he becomes the. Before he reveals himself, yeah, you know he's comedic. Effect. Before he reveals himself, to Luke. right? He reveals himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, phrasing. Begin your training will now. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, are we not doing phrasing anymore? I, guess, <laughs> I don't know. But the, 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 just the fact that he's supposed to be a black caricature, I did not realize immediately until. Like, well, wait. So, okay, but is he supposed to be, or did George Lucas like unwittingly do that? Because I don't. I was, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm posing okay, questions I don't, here. I uh, think, it's not a rhetorical device. I, uh, I think George Lucas 
is an innocent man, and I like in terms of like he's very at least at that stage in his life. He, I think no, I he's, could, we he's could say very he was innocent. like oh god, the word is leaving me. Naive. Yeah, very naive, and he's probably just like, oh, this will be fun. The kids will enjoy this. I, I, like love, this. I love characters like this that bring the comic relief. You know, yeah. he, he gave an it's interview funny. later where he's like, okay, one of my things about like fairy tales or fantasy is that there's always like a magical creature who shows the hero on his way. And that's okay. what I did with Yoda. He's sure. like this magical little frog who teaches yeah. the ways of the Force. <laughs> and that's what Jar Jar's supposed to do. He's like a magical, funny little creature who like helps the heroes on their way. Except okay. he's irritating. He's irritating, yeah. it's like all of his help is unwitting. It's, yeah, he's a lot closer to something out of like Labyrinth or Dark Crystal or something, but those movies yeah. like have some redeeming qualities, I imagine. I haven't even seen both of them. So. <laughs> they, they have this great um, part in the behind the scenes where he's they're filming in, I think it's Tunisia, they're doing the Tatooine scene, mm. and uh, he goes up to the guy who's playing Jar Jar. And he goes like, oh, "How are you doing?" And he goes like, "He goes, I'm hot." And he goes like, oh, "I understand, I'm I'm hot too." And then the guy goes, "The guy goes, but I'm cool, you know." And like, like you know, like, like he's making a joke. Like he's trying it, to make I it mean, like, clearly. <laughs> but he goes like, he's like, "But I'm cool." And then George Lucas is like, "I wish I could say the same." <laughs> but like, he, he says that he, he knew. He's like, I wish he knew from that moment, fans were going to crucify him. Oh my yeah, god! I wish I could say the same. I mean, that just sounds like him approaching any like semi-popular person in high school. Yeah, I wish I could. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, is, like he's bringing going, them water because he's the water boy for whatever sports team or something. Are you, yeah. going, are you going to the football game tonight? Yeah, right. I'll, 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 I'll tag along. <laughs> and that I've already finished my homework for tonight. The so fact that his mother said I can go out. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go get some, go get some shakes? And, uh, yeah. It's just American graffiti, but he's not involved <laughs> it's just, in any yeah, of it. He's living American graffiti. <laughs> no, but he's like not it's involved. It's an autobiographical in film. He's not involved in any of it. He's just at the dining yeah, the whole right, time. Yeah, right. Like yeah, which is how he's able to chronicle it so well. Is because he's not directly involved in any. He's just writing it all down. It's like, oh, that'll make a funny. That'll make a funny joke. Have Harrison Ford say the phrase "piss yellow" about a thousand times. Because he says that about a thousand times. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've not. Okay. I haven't seen the sequel with Michelle Pfeiffer either. More American Graffiti? Oh, wait, that's no, that's another Grease th- too. Never mind. No, that's that's another thing behind <laughs> the scenes where there's a great part where he's standing on the set. They're in between takes or whatever, and he's like, you know, you can mess these things up, you know. And like, there's just like a PA standing next to him, like some like non yeah, just a hired hand. Yeah, non essential person who's obviously like, holy shit, I'm talking to George Lucas, and uh-huh. he's talking to me. He goes, you can mess these things up, you know. And he goes like, I made more American Graffiti. It made ten cents. And he goes. So you never know. Like, and, then, like, and then the guy and the guy stands there and he, and he goes like, really? Like that. Like, all, <laughs> yeah. But it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, George Lucas talked to me. And he aired all the like, grievances about yeah. this, like life. You yeah. know what I mean? Just, just dumped out his purse. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. more American graffiti made 10 cents. So you can mess these things up. You know? <laughs> this guy's just like, how do I make this into an anecdote for the rest of my life? Yeah. <laughs> you may never speak to me again. It's so amazing that like, they thought that this would work. It's so nobody challenged him on anything. I mean, do we need yeah. to do we need to check and see how much money it made? Because I'm pretty sure it did <laughs> fiscally work. Well, okay, well you got me there. But it it's it made so more than ten cents. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's so amazing that after nobody we adjust for inflation, him on yeah. But you wouldn't challenge him at this point. Well, because it's George Lucas. Yeah. Well, and and. Yeah. I mean, did did they all just assume that he was the the driving force and like the one that made these? That had these concepts made into such great movies that are now you know, I, iconic and stuff would, like that. One would assume, yeah. Because think about it, he had just made like Indiana Jones, too. yeah. Like so, it's like he made the two like biggest film franchises at the time, yeah. So you probably wouldn't question him. I know there was a lot of work after this movie came out of people coming out of the work and saying, "Well, actually, there were a lot of script doctors on oh, yeah. the original Star Wars movies, and you had two people directing the sequels." So. Oh. To ascribe all this responsibility to George Lucas for doing this world building is apparently to these people not entirely accurate. Okay. It's amazing though so. that um, it shows like I'm all for like directors' visions of films, mm. but you have to challenge some people. Like it has mm. to be a collaborative effort. Yeah. Like you can't just have this like godlike sentience over a movie because yeah. then you just throw, especially because George Lucas had all the money he wanted. 
So he could oh, just yeah. throw in anything that he wanted mm-hmm. in this movie, and it ended up just being like a jumbled mess. Like mm-hmm. he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna do like a political thriller." Yeah, you which is I mean? uh, we're kind of getting the opposite problem with a lot of movies. You know, a lot of like major blockbuster movies that are coming out now well, because, because the, of the previews. Yeah, because the studios are so invested, and they're like, uh, "Now we're we want to be like more than 100 percent sure that this is going to make appeal the, to like, fans. Yeah, that it's gonna make the money that we need it to make because this is an investment for us. So yeah, I guess it would make sense if he just wasted a bunch of people's money. <laughs> on, on stuff that just didn't appeal to anybody. Well, appealed to very few people. Yeah. <laughs> What's another terrible part of this movie? Actually, can we circle back to what you said? Let's talk about some of the good things for the prequels. And uh, one of the things that really stands out to me is John Williams and his score oh, yeah. for the prequels. Oh, those are yeah, amazing. Yeah. Oh, Duel of the Fates. Yeah. To this yeah, day. To, yeah. Talking about the lightsaber battles, like it's it's yeah. running through my head Precisely. as we you know when we were talking about it. So while we're <laughs> on Duel of the Fates, can I just point out one tiny little detail that I love? This is just totally random, and I just notice it when I watch the movie, but. There's a part, and I'm sure anybody who's seen the movie has this like burned in their brain because it's part of everybody's childhood. But there's the part where they're they're fighting, and then Darth Maul like uses the Force to like knock open a door or yeah. something. Yeah. And then they go through this hallway, and it's you know the dun 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 like it's really ramping up. Yeah. And Qui Gon comes in, and there's this shot where he's backing up Maul. I mean, is backing up against the ledge. And they both coming in on either side to like try and like flank him. Mm-hmm. And there, there's something about Ewan McGregor's body language in this moment where like he drops all stances of sword fighting, mm-hmm. and he like kind of hunkers down. Like I know the listeners can't hear or can't see what I'm saying, <laughs> but trust me, as he's like hunkering down, and he looks like he for a brief second he's about to just tackle Maul. Yeah. And what I love is that that's just like a little subtle character thing. Mm-hmm. It shows you how intense the fight is. Yeah. Because you know how trained Jedis are. Mm-hmm. But I love that the the adrenaline is flowing so much yeah. that Ob- in Obi-Wan's mind, he's like, if I get a chance to just fucking tackle this dude, I'm yeah. just going to do right. it. Right, yeah. You know I just I mean? need to lay him out. We need to neutralize this threat right away. Yeah, yeah they're going to yeah. make YouTube videos of it. They're going to have World Star World playing Star. in the background. Yeah. You, you, you get my point, though. Like, it, it, yeah. it levels up the intensity mm-hmm. of the scene because, like, <laughs> I love the idea that yeah. he's like, oh, I'm just going to tackle yeah, this guy yeah, if, if I get if a chance. Need, yeah, if needs be, he'll drop his lightsaber and yeah, just, and just knock tackle the dude and out. just beat the shit out and, of yeah, him. And yeah. that works for where Obi-Wan is at sure. that moment in his life. Yeah. He's just a kid who's still trying to prove himself. He's still mm. an, an apprentice. So, yeah. yeah. It, and again, of course, one of the most fantastic moments in the movie we can attribute to you in record. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, you mean the part I just said? Yes. Oh, I thought you were going to transition into a different no, part. I'm, I yeah, like, no, I was <laughs> recapping. Oh. The part where he makes that great joke about how the uh, the discussions were short. The negotiations <laughs> were short. <laughs> Negotiations were short. Channeling his best deadpan Alec Guinness. It's so... <laughs> so bad it line. Work. There's so much bad line work in these movies that mm-hmm. Ewan McGregor just does such a great job translating into something watchable. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to kick the guy while he's down, but we have to talk about Jake Lloyd in this movie. Oh, mm-hmm. we have we, to talk about we? Jake Lloyd. Is he down? How's he doing these days? <laughs> <laughs> well, Jingle All the Way 2 didn't have him in it. So. Oh. oh. Wait, there was a sequel to Jingle All the Way? It had Larry the Cable Guy in it. Uh, really? Was idiot. he the kid that wanted a toy? No, I think he was like a Santa Claus type character. <sighs> I have to go see this movie with my dad now. <laughs> because we, I have vivid memories of seeing Anyways, sorry. Yeah, no, that sounds, <laughs> sounds like we're both going to have to watch that at some point. With our dads. <laughs> yes. This is not... Jake Lloyd's fault in this movie. No. He's irritating as all hell in this Leave movie. Leave Jake Lloyd alone! <laughs> but it's because... Said a thousand you... swooning nine-year-old girls from <laughs> oh the <God>. 90s. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Leave him alone. Yeah. No, but it's not his fault. Well, no, he's a child but that was hired is, to do a job. He's. It's amazing. George Lucas ruined this kid's life. Well! Uh, uh, he uh, gave him the most irritating part in a franchise with the most cutthroat fans. Mm. He did turn Darth Vader into a little bitch and yeah. he made Jake Lloyd yeah. the performer. Yeah, he's the personification bitch. of that. Yeah. 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 Master Gwygon, sir, wait, I'm tired. Oh yeah, that's I'm a good point. Throw up. Like it's so the, okay, so he built C three PO, right? And have you do you guys remember the scene where he says goodbye to C three PO? Vaguely, vaguely. It's yeah. so not heartfelt. <laughs> you so don't feel anything. And he's just like He's like, bye, three PO. I'll make sure mom doesn't sell you. Huh. And it's like, well, okay. Like, why even have him in here yeah. if this emotional moment isn't gonna land? Well, like, which producer's nephew was he? Like, how did he even get this part? <laughs> it's almost like they didn't audition anyone and they just found a kid. Well, he got it because he was in Jingle All the Way. Seriously. And 
Well, because um, they based sh- on the strength of Jingle All the Way, this kid no, was well, cast they, as they show, young Anakin. They show the auditions of like because this fucking documentary goes in depth of like how they made. So it is a documentary. It's not like a, like a twenty minute feature. No, it's like or ninety something. minutes of how okay. they made it. But like, it's it, it's interesting, and you, you see watched Jer- it. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's yes, I did edited. watch it. That's I mean, gonna I'm, get edited out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that surprised. It's just oh, you poor, you poor kid. It's just interesting if you're like at all interested in filmmaking. Andy, why the fuck aren't you in film school? Yeah, I'm, right. <laughs> I'm intimidated by the technology. Oh, because you actually want to make a living. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> anyway, um, he's like auditioning all these kids, and he says like, "Well, Jake's been in a movie before, so I know he'll be professional on set." Mm. Like that, like George Lucas just doesn't want to deal Was with that. Kids. It? Yeah, that's what he says. He goes, <laughs> "Just wants a kid that has some experience in yeah. being on a movie set." Yeah, and they have this part where they show Jake Lloyd sign the contract. Okay. Of like, uh, which I didn't even know they would make kids do that. Yeah, that sounds but... not super. Your blinding. soul belongs to 20th Century Fox now. <laughs> no. <laughs> as, as your soul is just taken is from the, you. Is the gates of hell open up and yeah, his, his soul is swallowed? <laughs> and George Lucas shaped Satan is welcoming again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, he signs his name, and then you hear all this like clapping, and and then it like pans up, and there's like about. A dozen like elderly to middle aged people, and it says like Jake's coaches and advisors and this and that, and they're like, we're all very proud of you, Jake. And I was like, this poor kid had just like his entire childhood like ripped away from yeah, him, and that... it's not even like he was performing in some like fucking Billy Elliot play or something <laughs> yeah. that nobody would ever remember. Oh, it's yeah. like he got put on the international yeah, the world stage yeah, in the most popular franchise of all time, and everybody's like. <laughs> That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, in in the documentary, do all those old his coaches and advisors and stuff? Do their eyes turn to dollar signs it after looks like while it. they're clapping? It like, looks like they it. look like they could just rip him to shreds. Yeah, they're just like, oh my god, we're gonna make so much money off of uh, all the toys. Yeah, <laughs> I keep hearing these stories for years and years and years about how like a lot of the other actors on set would apparently refer to Jake Lloyd as Mannequin Skywalker because he so completely lacked charisma. Yeah. I mean, like, well, well, it's not his fault because he's no. a kid, but yeah. it's, it's George Lucas's fault for hiring a kid that's not right for the role. Right. Well, it sounds like he, he hired a child, not a child actor. You know? yeah. Like, yeah. He hired a kid that happened to be in a movie and the movie, like, we've seen it. So, well, yeah, it must be a movie. But, yeah, it doesn't sound like he hired, like, a child actor that has, you know, training or experience or maturity level or whatever else is really necessary to be able to, you know, convey or at least feign emotion. emotion. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, he, he's doing the same thing Clint Eastwood is doing with this movie about the, the soldiers who saved those people on that French train. That oh, where the soldiers play themselves? Yeah. That's oh. going to be bad. Huh. <laughs> That's going to be really bad. I mean, that sounds... Uh, it sounds daring, and it sounds bold. It does not sound like it would be successful. It sounds very Clint Eastwood. Okay. It's a Clint Eastwood movie, so I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Okay. We all remember Sully. And by that, I mean nobody remembers <laughs> Sully. Like from Monsters, Inc.? No, the movie, <laughs> Sully, where he lands the plane in the Hudson. It happened like a year ago, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> Don't you remember that movie? <laughs> like mm. everybody else in America remembers Sully? <laughs> I remember the man. The one where they're yeah. all marching? Selma. Oh. No, oh! A... Selma. Yeah. Sol- Selma. Selma. I see what you did there. I mean, I thought it was just maybe like a familiar nickname for Selma. <laughs> Tom Selma. Hanks plays Martin Luther King Jr., the role of a lifetime. <laughs> That sounds like a Clint Eastwood decision. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, he'd nail that part. Uh, yeah. yeah. He would in blackface, which is exactly why it will never happen. I, yeah, yeah I, well, yeah, limited release, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> in some artsy theater. <laughs> yeah. You've heard of Red Band, this is Black Band. Yeah, yeah, this is, no, it's actually just Band, but B-A-N-N-E-D, yes. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Song of the South style. Jazz singer Al Jolson style. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And I was actually going to mention the Song of the South earlier when we were talking about Jar Jar. Like, do you, I wonder if like Disney will just kind of cram that into the like the cellar beneath the Disney vault. Like, oh yeah, this just we don't talk about this one anymore. We don't talk it's, about it. Well, I think charged. isn't that where all the prequels are right now? I don't just know. As a whole, they're like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check Amazon right now and well, see sure if I can, can buy the prequels. I'm sure. You can I mean, buy, they still want my money, don't they? I'm sure you can buy this mega successful franchise, but they're never going to yeah. reference it again. Well, well, well Luke, you know what? You, Luke dropped the phrase Darth Sidious in The Last Jedi, and a thousand fanboys like collectively got wet when that mm. happened. <laughs> yeah. I My mean, spine that was going to tingle a little. It was, gonna, it was going to happen anyways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of spine tingling, let's talk about something that's not Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Attack. <laughs> this is, here's the big question. 
is this worse than episode one? I say no. Okay. Because episode one is fucking boring. Episode two at least has stuff where you can go. Yeah. You can make fun of it. Yeah. It's it's entertaining. I mean, it's, yeah. it's pure spectacle. Sure, yeah. There's no yeah. galactic politics or trade here. There's, like, Christopher Lee walking around being boring some of the time. <laughs> which, what a what a waste of great talent to, yeah. like, have him on screen for ten minutes and be boring the whole time. Yeah, quite a tragedy. But it really is just a bunch of action sequences strung together by, like, the thinnest of plots. Mm. And it's, like, the complete opposite of episode one. It is watchable. It's way more watchable. Yeah, yeah. But Definitely it's also worse. completely stupid at the same time. Oh, yeah. Because there's... You don't even know what's going on for most of it. Mm. I mean, it has Django fed in it, yeah. which is, like, cool-ish, I guess. The original Django on the chains. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, it, is it cool-ish, or is it just gimmicky, though? I mean, I wouldn't... It it, it fits in the plot. And I guess the, maybe that's a question for the entire prequel franchise. No, <laughs> is yeah, it cool-ish, I mean, like, or is it just gimmicky? It fits into the plot, because, you know, the clone army is a clone of Django yeah. fed, which yeah, yeah. is, like, is that cool, or is that lame? I mean, I would think that if you've got cloning technology, you're not going to just clone one dude. You're going to, like, genetically modify, like, a bunch of different dudes into one dude that becomes, like, a super soldier, and then have Chris Evans play him. (laughs) As soon as you said super soldier. (laughs) Also, if you're going to clone someone, don't have it be someone who, like, gets killed incredibly easily in the first movie that he's in. Come on! The greatest bounty hunter. But is he dead? You know, you really want to mess with people? You harvest DNA from Qui-Gon's dead body. Ooh, and blend it with the uh, half of Darth Maul. That Oh, snap. Yeah, the Darth Maul Qui-Gon Jinn baby. Oh, now you've got a movie. Yeah. So does he have the luscious hair, but it it has the horns? The horns horns and the black and red tattoos on the face. Or is his hair black and red? Oh. I don't know. Wait. Wait, are those tattoos, or is that not his skin? T- I thought his, no, that, his race was, like, that I think that's color his skin. Or something. Okay. okay, I don't know. That's it's way redder. redder. I don't know. He's covered, like, up to the neck, so we yeah. don't yeah. really know. Well, no, when he's... They have, like, I've read the comic, and they show okay. him, like, training, and it's all over. Yeah, they go all in. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mature readers only book. He's, yeah. he's shirtless, like, Kylo Ren in yeah. Last Jedi. Yeah. Ben, ben Swolo. Yeah. Yeah. His pants are a little... Uh, they're not so high-waisted, though. <laughs> Wasted. He's, he's just got, you know, yoga pants on or whatever. It's yoga like, pants. It says juicy on the back. <laughs> Yoda's face. <laughs> juicy, this is. <laughs> juicy this is. That's another thing about these prequels. Yoda sucks. They get Yoda completely wrong. Uh, because, like, Yoda, I get that he's weird and, phil- you know, philosophical and he, is that the right word, philosophical? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And he, he talks weird. But this, Unless you meant, like, uh, paradoxical or something like that. This, <laughs> no, I, I, just, meant, I yeah. just meant, like, he's very, like, introspective. But, like, this, he doesn't do anything until he fights Darth Sidious with the world's tiniest lightsaber, which is, like, <laughs> comical. You know what I mean? Like, it's well, comical that he has this tiny little lightsaber. He, he's a short guy. He's not going to be able to have Yeah, exactly. It's got to be proportional. It, doesn't, no, it wouldn't really it make sense. He's, he's not going to handle the, the, the broadsword from... Uh, that uh, Braveheart. But he's, he's not going to handle Kylo Ren's sword. The giant. Oh, what with the little lightsaber? Yeah. He's coming out the side. At like, least have like a Yoda version of the Darth Maul one where you've got two blades popping out. Yeah, or you could have two of them. But the thing or about you could have Yoda. Throwing like is... star lights. Yeah, a light dagger. Light, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a light dagger. That'd be perfect. A light, or a bunch of light shurikens. Just, just his size. Yeah. Nunch- light nunchucks. <laughs> Ooh, light chucks. Ooh. Yeah. But the thing about him is he should be, like, above using lightsabers, though. Like, yeah. he's so powerful that he shouldn't need to use a lightsaber. I mean, for but me... I guess, I guess it's sort of like the way, like, the chief of police carries a gun, even though they're in the police station the whole time. Mm. Like, it's just tradition. Could I be. guess that's true. It could I, be like I don't that. actually know if chief of police I think carry you're, guns. You're <laughs> playing... I don't know I why think... you bring it up so specifically. Then. I have no... I just... I thought that that would be a it's relevant possible. analogy yeah. no, well, it's, it's just tradition i don't it's... know because you think of, I, for me if you think about the force and jedis and like the capabilities of it because uh, another thing that the prequels started to do was actually show them like using the force on things like yeah. force pushes and force jumps and force speed i think in at least one scene in and episode that they one. never use again yeah right when exactly it could be very useful <laughs> would be crazy useful so trilogy. if they can do stuff like that if you can move stuff with your mind i mean how do you not just get in that brainstem and you know? Exactly. Like, just how do you have Jedi fights Disrupt with swords? Two electrical impulses in this. Yeah, yeah. it should you know? be forced aneurysm. 
Yeah, exactly. That's that's what these fights should be. It's like they just stare at each other really intensely and maybe start bleeding from their ears or something, and then one of them falls down dead. But maybe it's maybe it is from like a sense of tradition and maybe like no- nobility and honor. Or well, something they do like that. say so fight each that other. This contest cannot be decided by our knowledge of the force, <laughs> but rather by oh, our skills with CGI. That and Christopher line, Lee's head onto a fucking stuntman. That line <laughs> hurts. So obvious. And you made Christopher Lee deliver what is. Really, one of the worst lines in American cinema. It rips my soul for this. And, and the fact that you, and the fact that he could even deliver it that well is just a testament to how good of an actor he was. What if, <laughs> what if, what if they didn't pull out their lightsabers and they instead walked over to a foosball table, and that was the way they were going to settle their? Uh, would he have to get on a stool though to be so short? That's a good point. Yeah, they Only, would be able to do does it. he have a little tiny? Oh no, no, no! Because you said foosball. I thought you meant ping. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, pong. but I mean, it's would, still he have a little, would he have yeah. a little tiny paddle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the foosball <laughs> on the foosball table, just the little soccer players like light up. They have like little red and green outlines yeah. to signify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like nine different soccer balls bouncing around in there because they're just so advanced with their their Jedi knowledge or whatever. And oh, and the little characters are the same as the ones on Han Solo's chessboard in the original. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, with like four arms or whatever. And yeah, yeah, that could work. Let the Wookiee win. Let the let the green toad man win? Do we even know what Yoda is? Like Yoda's, his race? Yoda's Yoda. Just, yeah. They haven't revealed. There's, there's I mean, only one of you, them. You can ask. No, no, there's Yaddle. That's true. But there's the a female, female Yoda. There's a female Yoda. Yikes. Named Yaddle. Why? I mean, the whole point is that he's the last of his race. I mean, is that is that the... Yeah, he's the last... That was supposed to be the point. To me, the whole the point was that Yodaville. he's like shrouded in mystery. Yeah. Is that mm-hmm. you don't need to know his backstory. He's just yeah. Yoda. And one of the things that I think you both really hint at here is that the prequels really destroy a lot of what makes the Jedi seem cool in yeah. the original trilogy is that mm-hmm. they only resort to violence as a last resort mm-hmm. except these cool philosophers not inept bureaucrats yeah <laughs> they're a bunch of boring monk men yeah and and base windows just flat out an asshole the entire film yeah. i'm going to berate the small child and oh, be surprised when he chops my hand off later yeah. on <laughs> yeah. take a seat young Skywalker. take a seat yeah. Well, and yoda does give him the dressing down of like basically no dude you can't get trained you need to leave kind yeah. of thing yeah, you're a psychopath. So, yeah, you right. can't act. <laughs> you can't act. <laughs> Go back to pod racing. Yeah. yeah, in real life, Jake Lloyd, who got pulled over for speeding. Uh, the legal that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is, well, well, and that's also kind of a bummer because Mace Windu, in everything else I've seen him in besides those prequels, it's has been really awesome. yeah, he's fucking cool, and I like that character. But you punch out this droid with my bare fists, my yeah, brother. dude. It's like smashing them together and shit like he's the Hulk. Can we can we go on like a brief sidebar and talk about the Jendi Tartakovsky Clone Wars? Sure. Or I have not, not seen it in its entirety, but sure. Yeah, oh, it's so fun. It like really like actually took the elements of the prequels and made them like into a fun watchable. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. The thing, is he about... took everything that could be salvaged from those and, and totally made it something that's pretty great. The, that's the thing about the prequels Absolutely. is I find the episode three era to be one of the more interesting eras in like the star wars timeline in the lore because yeah. i like the idea of like everything right before it fell like a couple days before it fell you know and i know that's not when the clone wars animated series takes place but i'm just saying that proves that you can take this timeline like it's not clone troopers aren't lame Django Fett isn't lame. Mm. Count Dooku isn't lame. General Grievous it's, does more than cough. Yeah, General <laughs> Grievous isn't, isn't... Yeah, these these things Robot aren't lame. Cough. They're just lame in these movies. Yeah. Because yeah. George Lucas didn't know what to do with them. Yeah. You know the story of the Grievous cough, right? Apparently oh, one day George Lucas walked into like the sound recording studio. He coughed. They happened to catch that on tape, and they decided General Grievous is going to have a cough, and we're going to use George Lucas's cough. Yeah. <sighs> This I, is I love, this is literally the prequels. You you just throw everything at the wall. To see I mean, did someone like? I feel like that like there could be a similar anecdote about like somebody went into the bathroom after George Lucas and he hadn't flushed and they decided that they were going to use that as some kind of like you know. Uh, they monster use... in the background of uh, Jabba's <laughs> palace or something like that. Like, just, just that there's nothing this guy can't do, including his bodily functions, that isn't viable to put into these movies. You're on the right track there, because apparently he, like, was trying to decide in the original movie, what should the Millennium Falcon look like? Mm. He takes a bite out of his burger one day, and what... No! Yes! Yes! Uh. That's what the Falcon looks like. Or that's why the Falcon looks like it does. <laughs> he bit the hole in the Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so heck. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm but sorry, it, if but it works, yeah. it works. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool, it's the fastest ship in the galaxy, or is made it? the twist, made the Kessel run less than twelve parsecs, which I guess is good. I really don't. Yeah, know. they don't. Yeah. They never mention it. <laughs> but that's the thing about the, those original movies; they don't have to mention if it's good yeah. or not. Yeah, these movies they just... sit down and they're like, well, you know, the Jedi are the most powerful force. 
galaxy and they are going to extinct uh, you know, they are going to protect everybody you know the the fun thing about the original movies is that the galaxy has a very lived in feel oh sure yeah, you don't yeah. see everything happening on screen you don't have everything explained to you in minute detail they don't have blue milk they don't show where it comes from yeah oh, right right oh, crap i'm yeah. gonna take you down that road yeah, like, <laughs> but we're it's anti-blue milk we're yeah. against it watch the last jedi oh okay yeah there's an but it, you'll know when you see it. It okay. leaves, but it leaves uh, some room open for the viewer's imagination to kind of take over. Well, that's okay. what makes it so great for when you're a kid because you're like, I kind of want to live in this world. Sure. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, you, like your mind kind of fixates on little things in the background where you're like, I wonder how the sand speeder works. Like, yeah, I wonder how yeah. that works. Sure. You know? And Wait, it becomes black, real to you. Lando Calrissian has a white slave with like a <laughs> robot his, band on the back of yeah, his head. That's he, so cool. He beats by Dre. Yeah. <laughs> Lobot. Beats by Billy D. <laughs> oh, dude, I would totally buy those. Absolutely. That'd be great. Uh, yeah, well, well, and that's that's part of it is that like uh, like the mystique of not knowing is yeah. often better than yeah being explained, but, being being spoon fed every little detail that you've ever wanted to know. It's not always better to know. Like sometimes it's better to just be like, yeah, we don't know. Like it's just yeah, whatever you think. You it's know, like, like the Halloween series, which I know you haven't watched, but like I've seen the first one. When they like, okay, well, you know why the first one is great because they never explain Michael Myers and why he went insane. He's just this killer, and it kind of has this aura of mystery around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then as the sequels go on, they have to explain every fucking right. part of his yeah, family tree, totally. and they're yeah. like, oh, here's a curse of like why he's murdering people, and it's like not interesting yeah. in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, it's exactly know? that. Like if you were to go back and explain every single detail of you know, Wolverine from birth to death. Like, we would all just be like, oh. Or the Joker. Well, that's boring. Yeah. yeah. And then you get X-Men Origins Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> Case in point, you, you brilliantly illustrated what we're trying to do, what the prequels do wrong, which is sometimes taking away the mystery. Just bad CGI. Yeah. And, and bad CGI. CGI. Yeah, bad CGI. <laughs> oh, God. Um, that's a the, product of its time. Though. But the thing is, like, I actually like the story of the prequels. I like the idea of this and this is going to sound really lame because I'm reading into it way too much, but I like the idea of this dude who is told he is the chosen one, not really sure if he is, and but just the mounting pressure of the job that he is like kind of forced into yeah. by these like intergalactic police officers, basically, yeah. just cracks him. You know yeah. what I mean? I like the idea of this sounds super dumb, and it sounds like everybody's like, oh, well, it's not not touched upon in the prequels at all but i like the idea of mental stress just breaking a man yeah you know and, yeah, and that that's what sense. the prequels could be yeah. about because you know what i mean he's he basically is abducted mm. from his family <laughs> and he's told like oh you're gonna save the galaxy you know what i mean yeah that yeah. would be like saying you're going to stop 9-11 or something sure, you know what yeah, i mean you'd yeah. be like well, what if i don't then yeah it's my fucking fault totally, you know yeah. what i mean and, and and yeah just take that scale and make it an entire galaxy mm. yeah you know like and, and, everybody and, that's alive anywhere near this star system so all of a sudden queen amidala's a silver spaceship becomes qui-gon Jinn's white kidnapping the child van yeah exactly over there <laughs> <Blah, blah. laughs> so there's a park and he's playing he's like pod racing or fixing up his little pod race thing yeah fly low and it's got like What's a what's a delicacy in the Star Wars universe? I was just trying to think. Of, I was just yeah, trying to think so of the equivalent of candy. Death, hey Wars kid, universe. I've got some death sticks in here yeah. for you. Yeah. Death uh, You don't want to sell me death sticks. <laughs> that time Star Wars tried to be politically relevant. So mm. politically you know, relevant. this is going to teach kids not to be proud. I didn't even get it when I was a kid. I was just watching it, going like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> death sticks. I got it. Cool. I just I'm like, yeah, all right. George Lucas doing Nancy Reagan's "Just Say No" yeah. twenty years <laughs> too late. You just say no in the Star Wars universe. Relevant there, please. But, like, okay, the idea that, like, Anakin Skywalker is chosen and he's supposed to bring an end to the Sith, that's a lot of pressure to put on one nine-year-old. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And I love the idea that he's, like, a mentally ill dude. Because he's clearly mentally ill. Because he talks about sand and he's, like, obsessed with this woman that he hasn't seen for ten years. And, like, he's clearly got some problems. Shit. He's a stalker. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well... You're, no, no, you're right. He he definitely he exhibits a, signs of mental illness throughout yeah. the entire thing, mm -hmm. and I'm not just saying that. Yeah. Like, and I know this probably isn't George Lucas's intention, but fuck it. <laughs> Star Wars is for everybody, and I'm gonna read into it what I want to read into it. And I like the idea that by the end of the trilogy, he's broken. Like mm -hmm. he's like his mental state just snaps in half. Yeah. You know, because of like the they could have come up with a better reason than 
the dream about his wife dying. That's like he's like, oh well, which which Darth Seed is clearly planted in his head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I just love the idea that that's essentially like, oh well, I sharted yesterday, so I can't go, I can't hang, I can't go to work today. I'm afraid <laughs> yeah. I'll shit my pants. Yeah, right. You yeah. know what I mean? What if that was just the tip of the iceberg? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's one of those things where it's what like if a full pant load is next. <laughs> it's like people have nightmares, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people have nightmares. People shart. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. You can still go to work the next day. Sometimes they shart because of the nightmare. Yeah, exactly. Annie, <laughs> the bed. <laughs> you have to replace this shit again. <laughs> but, like, the way, like, Sidious tempts him, there's there's room for storytelling there. Mm. Where, like, the idea of, because he's not supposed to be married. Mm. He's married in secret. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Jedi are a bunch of, like, sexless monk men. You know, <laughs> like. And, and I like, women, Yaddle. Yeah, yeah, but I like the, uh, they're very inclusive. They are. <laughs> one Yaddle, there's like a billion Mace Windu, but uh, Mace Windu and Obi-Wan, and then one Yaddle. And, so the, and, could, the, and the guy with the cone head and the ponytail on top. Key, Key Eddie Mundi. I always like that guy. What about the droid attack on the Wookiees? <laughs> yes! What about, what about female representation in the workplace? <laughs> no of a woman I do. <laughs> Good resume she has. <laughs> No, but, um... Not related to me, she is. <laughs> Highly recommended, she came. <laughs> Last of our race, she is. <laughs> no, but, like, the way Sidious tempts him, and I'm being serious here, is actually kind of interesting. Because, if you think about it, he's lived, not his entire life, he's, like, was nine and, or ten or whatever, so he knows what real life is like. And then he's sort of abducted into this cult of, mm-hmm. like, religious, you know, like, religious zealots. They even yeah. say that, like, it's an old religion, yeah. you know. And the way Sidious tempts him is, I kind of like the idea of, and this is an argument people use about democracy a lot, where mm-hmm. they say, like, well, it's not perfect, but it's the best system we have. Sure, yeah. Sort of like the Jedi, where mm-hmm. it's like, well, why can't they get married? Why can't they do this? Mm-hmm. Why can't they do... It kind of sucks, but it's what the galaxy needs to keep itself running, yeah, you know, to keep yeah. it in order. And mm-hmm. what I love is it's kind of like, um, it could be like almost like a difference, but this is like really getting way deeper than George Lucas ever intended. But it could be like the difference between like capitalism and communism, you know, mm-hmm. where it's sort of like you think you're getting more individuality by going over to this other side, but you really aren't because they're basically space Nazis. <laughs> you, get, you know what I mean, though? But it's sort of like the, the difference between freedom and fascism or whatever. Sure, you yeah, get my yeah, point? Yeah. Where um, I'm sure that's how a lot of like Nazis were recruited, besides mm-hmm. the fact that they lived in Germany. But yeah. like, But it's sort of like, you can be a part of something greater and you can contribute to this, you yeah. know? And that's yeah. kind of like the way that he gets tempted over is he's like, you want, really want to affect the galaxy because you've been told you have to save it this in your entire yeah, life? Right. Here's how you actually do it yeah. by with, leading space Nazis. Yeah, with an iron fist. But you get my point though, right? Like like the Jedi, they're not a perfect system, mm. but they're like necessary. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's the best system they have because nobody else can use the force. But it's like what keeps the galaxy in check, mm. you know? And, do that. Like, fucking, it's like, I came up with that in like five minutes. Yeah, make movies about that. Like, I came up with that in like five minutes. Don't yeah. have like him going, like talking about his feelings and his heart and, and his fans. I'm, I'm an agony pad man. <laughs> I'm haunted by the kiss you should never have given me. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough. And, it can, and, but, and Not just the men, but the women and children. Yeah. People make jokes about this, but it's only yeah. because this shit is real. That's you know so what I mean? Bad, it's yeah. not some leaked script that like yeah. people are but, like, yeah. can you believe George Lucas was going to yeah. make this? This like, was going to happen. Yeah. No, oh, this, I want to live in that alternate timeline. Yeah. I, where the prequels were good? Yeah, where, well, where it didn't get approved. And yeah, somebody, somebody actually stepped up and challenged him and was like, George, I love you to death, but no. This is not. No, happening. no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, George. No. But 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 it's a good idea. <laughs> it is an the, idea. It is the seed of a good idea, George. Let's try to cultivate it and make it into something great. This is Andy Foreman. Yeah. He's here to help you <laughs> He's seven in years about old. five minutes. He's seven years yeah. old. <laughs> solve your problems yeah. really quick. I, yeah. I do like Sidious in episode three in particular and he's a good villain he is and ian mcdermott really acts the shit out of his mm-hmm. part mm-hmm. oh yeah. man he makes he gives him all this shakespearean presence uh, if yeah. you ever heard the tragedy of darth plagueis the wise i thought oh, it's not the story that, that i would believe but mm-hmm. it's i mean he's just so hypnotic every time he's on screen you mm-hmm. can't create love <laughs> it's yeah, it's super. It's a corny, crappy line, but he runs with it. Mm-hmm. But if you have a guy that can sell it, yeah, it's ten times less bad. Yeah, I mean it's still bad, but sure, yeah, it's uh, more uh, palatable bad though. If yeah, you, yeah. If you got a crappy actor to play Obi Wan in, in Star Wars seventy seven and not Alec Guinness, then you that 
mm-hmm. truism comes to life. <laughs> but um, I guess we're moving on to episode three because we're already talking about it. Are we? Yeah. Bit, yeah. Can I just say I about mean, episode two? Jump bouncing around all of them. Shit. The most cringy line of the entire prequel series for me is, "You call this a diplomatic solution? No, I call it aggressive negotiation." It's the lamest shit I've ever <laughs> heard in my entire life. That that is the worst line written in the history of cinema. That, I'm not kidding. That's like, oh, hi, babe, I have something for you <laughs> is more believable than this shit. You know what I mean? It sounds like really bad foreplay between two politicians. I was just going to say, it sounds like something that would be in like a... a House of Cards ripoff? Well, like, like a George Clooney uh, rom-com that tanked or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would a George Clooney movie ever tank, though? Yeah, probably not. He's got like, all those silver hawk. It would, it would, it would, he's unsinkable. Would, yeah, the unsinkable George Clooney. <laughs> no, it would have that like Imagine Dragons bet my life song in there, but then like the title would come up. The, then the title would come up, and then like it would cut, and they'd be at a bar or something, and be like, "You call this a diplomatic solution?" And he'd be like, "No, I call it aggressive negotiations." It's like, it. and then it would cut to like December, but you'd be like, "I'll bet my life on you," like as it trails oh. off, the way bad trailers always do. Right? <laughs> like they have to have the little tease at the end, yeah. and then they trail off the song that they paid yeah. for. This it, Christmas. Yeah, it it wouldn't, this Christmas. It wouldn't be a modern. Tra- Trailer, unless it had the the Hans Zimmer Inception. (laughs) Do you call this diplomatic solution? (laughs) No, I call it (laughs) aggressive. (laughs) (laughs) No, you have to intercut each syllable of negotiation with a (laughs) (laughs) nego. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's not each syllable, but it's, it's all I can do. It's enough. all I can do. Yeah, we don't want like the yeah, we don't want to tax these poor people who have given up so much of their time to listen, <laughs> yeah. to listen to our Indian Yes, everybody clicked off by now. Yeah. So <laughs> clicked off. Have I missed this euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> Click off. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Click you off what? Pop pop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pop pop gets a click off. <laughs> So now that we're on episode three, can I just maintain that this is objectively the best of the prequels, and I maintain that the last 40 mm-hmm. minutes are fucking awesome. The, ma- the last 40 minutes of Revenge of the Sith? Yes. Well, first off, yes, it is definitely objectively Once the best of the prequels. Once they get past all that stupid shit on Kashyyyk, and all that, um, that was bad. like mm-hmm. Obi-Wan fighting Grievous, mm-hmm. oh, I, I, it's, we'll come back to it's that. It's not great, but it's. It falls into the bad category. But once they get back, once they get past that, and they basically they get past the lamest lightsaber battle in Star Wars history, which is uh, Sidious versus Mace Windu. Mm. Yeah, that's atrocious. That's bad. No, that's the second worst. The worst is uh, Anakin versus Count Dooku in Attack of the Clones when it's all dark and you just see the lightsabers oh, going past. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it's the lamest shit ever because. Yeah, they really, they only had so much money for the stuntman for Mm-mm. his CGI Christmas Relief head on. <laughs> Poor stuntman, he'll never get the credit. I know, man, you you've know, really I, been stomping his balls this I'm podcast. just saying, it's so obvious. I Why like, have Count Dooku being a lightsaber if, like, the actor, like, can't really physically do a lightsaber battle anymore? And apparently the reason Count Dooku has, like, a curved, hilted saber is because Christopher Lee had really bad arthritis, and he's like, if we had a curved lightsaber, I could hurt his bull with a whole lot easier. Oh, okay, so... Wow. But um, as far as the, the main storyline of episode three being the best, yeah, I totally agree. Those first like fifteen or twenty minutes where it actually shows Anakin and Obi Wan in action, getting oh, yeah. along, like fighting, being the best of the best in yeah. the Jedi Order, yeah. being heroes, yeah. that yeah, that works really some, well. Some bad boys two action right there. It really know? is. Like they're just they're or the other guys. Deep. They're like Mark uh, and Mark <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Mark Warbler. Wahlberg. Mark Warbler. War- <laughs> <laughs> I'm familiar with his work. He's actually a great ornithologist. But, um, uh, <laughs> but no, this is a, this is the best yeah. by far. I really like the opening actually, oh, the opening. where where they're. I mean, it's way too overblown with CGI and like mm. you know, the space battle. I mean, but, like, we're talking we, about the entire prequel. This side, is right? where yeah, this is where Joker Joker just decided. You know what? People are giving me shit for green screen CGI. I'm gonna go all out mm. and at least but, play into that. But yeah, it's really cool, time. and they have yeah. that awesome John Williams score. Mm. Yeah, the John dun, Williams dun. score. The drum dun, dun. Dun. Oh, and that. then the way they come in and it's it yeah. actually is kind of subtle well not subtle but it's kind of like restrained where yeah. you see like the two tiny little um starfighters is that what they're called i just i, I mean i feel like it's they're star- spaceships with the guns spaceships. but know. like they're they're dwarfed by this giant ship i'm like mm-hmm. wow that's kind of restrained and actually kind of interesting <laughs> and they fly in perfect sync so yeah it's like because you know they're in sync. yeah yeah um and then of course there's that lame dialogue this is where the fun begins. <laughs> Ray shields? Wait a minute. How did this happen? We're smarter than this. <laughs> but then, like, once they have that lightsaber battle between Sidious and Mace Windu, and 
I actually like the part where he's like, I need him, and then he like cuts his hand off just because of the John Williams score kicks on. It's like da 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 da, like, and it's <laughs> and you know, uh, Samuel L. Jackson really sells that he got his hand cut off. And, and Ian McDermott, that whole scene where where Mace so Windu tells him, "You have lost." No, no, <laughs> and he's just like fully over the top. Yeah, like yeah. he's yeah, gone from Shakespearean lost. villain to Batman Saturday comic. Saturday cartoon. 66, or, yeah, he's gone full yeah. Caesar Romero on us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were lost. It's so... Unlimited power! <laughs> but I really like that scene. Where, and you know what I love is that Anakin actually did the right thing. Because it's one of those things where, like, if a cop, like, was about to shoot a criminal, and then another cop killed that cop, or shot him to stop him, mm -hmm. that doesn't make that cop a criminal. Like, he's just <laughs> saving the life of somebody yeah. who was yeah. helpless and about to be killed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Does it make a difference if they're like medieval sexless monks, though? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. No, you're right. You're right. It does. But you get my point. Like he did nothing wrong. Yeah. Like he was just saving somebody from being murdered. Like a helpless. And that does throw sort of a nice wrench into the mythology of Darth Vader. He didn't just go to the dark side. He's in this morally gray situation. Mm -hmm. Also, we're saving love... an innocent person. Sure. Whether that's in the person of Palpatine yeah. or Padme, mm -hmm. he's not just someone who decided. I want to murder children. Yeah. And one morning when he wakes up, right. he's like trying to do what he thinks is best, mm -hmm. and that. Well, that's what I love is he has that he has that line where he says like I have brought peace, freedom, and security to my new empire, and you like feel like he's brainwashed. He's not like yeah. he's like, and I am oppressing everybody yeah. in this fucking or, galaxy. Yeah. Or you know? he's like he's deluding himself, yeah. maybe because some small part of him knows. It falls yeah. into that yeah. thing of like. Um, I'm not going to try and get too deep here, but, like, the psychology of, like, a lot of Nazis, mm -hmm. where they, like, kind of deluded themselves into yeah. thinking they were doing sure. something oh, right. Oh, yeah, 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 It's, do that. Well, yeah, because right he's got to live with himself somehow. Well, no, I know, but, like, th this has been, you know, this is in real life, mm -hmm. something like this has happened. So you could very easily write this yeah. into a children's fantasy series, <laughs> <Yeah>. this <laughs> Nazi allegory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... You get my point, though. Like he's, he's not, like, banging his fist and yelling, like, and everybody will get one bowl of soup a day, you know, and there nobody, you know, there will be one brand and, and he's for not... every product. And he's not, like, like actively trying to oppress people in, yeah. like, a like a fascistic way. Yeah. Is that the right word? That, yeah. Okay. yeah. Like, he's not trying to, like, oppress them. He's like, I have brought peace, freedom, and security. And he's like, I have got overthrown this religion that wouldn't let me get laid, <laughs> even though Matt, Natalie Portman... Like, was very willing to fuck me, you know what I mean? <laughs> After, like, much convincing. <laughs> yeah. How do we know, I'm a, sen I'm a senator. How do we know he wasn't using his uh, Jedi mind tricks on her? Like... <laughs> There's a, there's a Harvey Weinstein joke to make here. I, yeah, I, I would know. not go near that. No. The I Jedi couch? <laughs> oh. So, you know. This uh, is going to get edited out in post-production. Yeah, so, anyways. I can't edit, so it's not. It's all staying <laughs> in. I kid, I kid. No, but, um. Yeah, they they really like actually have some real character shit in here, yeah, and I feel do. like if this and I'm not like a an excellent storyteller or anything, but like I feel like if this was the second part of the trilogy and then part three was like the rise of the empire, mm -hmm. it would be a lot better. Like just yeah. say episode two was done better and was part one. Yeah, this was part two, and then part three was like not Rogue One, but around Rogue One. Sure. Yeah. Time of, yeah. Yeah. Like the active oppression of the of the. Yeah, I actually banged my fist when I said that. I went the <laughs> active oppression. <laughs> yeah, now I'm picturing that downfall in the Hitler rant. Hitler rants about but the Star Wars prequel trilogy. But it's, um, <laughs> but it's Ian McDermott giving that rant. Oh, yes. <laughs> I am the I am the Third Reich. No, I am the Senate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he gets, he's all hunched over and he's... And there's a bunch of stormtroopers outside, like, crying <laughs> and controlling, consoling each other. <laughs> yeah. But there's, Grand Moff Tarkin is like... Yeah, he's the straight lip guy. Yeah, exactly. He's the straight lip guy. But around the time this movie came out, I remember George Lucas giving an interview and saying that this is really the story of like four characters: of Yoda, Obi Wan, Padme, and Anakin. And that's part of what makes it work is that it is more centered around that smaller Small core. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's more intimate. Yeah. Rather yeah. than the full blown spectacle fest that was Episode Two. Yeah. Or the needlessly complex episode well, one what's yeah. even great about their lightsaber battle at the end is it looks like a real battle it looks like they're trying to kill each other you know what i mean like you watch um even like duel of the fates it doesn't look 
aggressive a lot of the time. It it's looks hard. more like a dance sure. or like yeah. a yeah. chess yeah. game. It's, it's, yeah, it's extremely structured. Yeah. This is it's, just no this, holds barred. It's like no. a brutal yeah. kind of. And what I love is like there are parts where they like both lose their lightsabers and they just kick each other and like mm-hmm. punch. And it's yeah. like it shows a little bit more of like I just want to kill this person. Like mm-hmm. I don't have any interest in like feeding into this Jedi training. Yeah. Like if yeah. I can kill yeah. this guy, I will. Yeah. You know? And you know a lot of people think, oh, oh my gosh, John Williams, the Duel of the Fates is the best thing he did in prequel trilogy. I really think that Battle of the Heroes, which is the track oh, that plays by Paul well, Anakin, yeah, I feel like that's the best piece of music to come out of the Star Wars dun, prequels. Dun, 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 yeah, dun, 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 dun. it's painful. It's epic in mm. equal measure. It's it's tragic. Yeah, it's and it's just it, so it's well done. Entertaining, like it yeah. really gets you pumped up, and it it pumps you up while at the same time getting you to realize these are two friends who are about to kill yeah, each exactly. other. Yeah, these no are two matter, besties at each other's throats. Yeah, two characters that you've grown to care about to varying degrees. No matter who wins, you as the viewer like lose mm, and yeah. we'll have to share the pain of the loser mm-hmm. what about order 66 the whole one when g out of yuki died yeah <laughs> what about the droid attack what about the clone attack on the jedi <laughs> well i love there's some good acting from that actor where he turns around and he has like this look of like this what the sad. fuck yeah i need and then the realization he's like oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, maybe order we shouldn't 66. have had a clone army that was made in secret like <laughs> and the one this clone army that was made in secret that nobody knows anything about maybe we shouldn't have like used this maybe or we shouldn't have this. just trusted them <laughs> without <laughs> any sort of interview process yeah, right. and, we might have had and, some vetting process here and yoda like grabbing his chest at the end because he realizes oh. what's happening that's the one time you like i feel like you need cgi yoda because you can't get a puppet to like yeah probably not quite that chest. yeah not not as emphatically or dramatically yeah, yeah. he would look even goofy. jim henson probably couldn't pull off the <laughs> it'd be like a little shaky head it'd be like oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like that really creepy shot of Yoda falling off of Luke's back in Empire Strikes Back. Where yeah. He just looks like, Rawr! it's yeah. super scary. You know, yeah, all oh, sad I am. His yes. eyes get wider than in any other scene. Exactly, yeah. You know what's great about this, though, is like it personifies what's wrong with the prequel trilogy, is there are really cool lines followed by really fucking lame lines. I'm speaking specifically of the, I failed you, Anakin. I failed you. It's really well delivered. Yeah. It's a good line. Mm-hmm song is great and, you know the battle of the heroes is great behind it it's acted well and then i should have known the jedi were plotting to take over mm. anakin chancellor palpatine is evil from my point of view the jedi are evil why you don't even need that just yeah. cut it out you know what i mean like <laughs> and yeah why why is that in there but you get my point though like that's a really awesome scene that even yeah. now i'm like it's fucking awesome mm. but like it's immediately followed by like a split yeah. second later by like the lamish like shit. Like, yeah, you're just immediately worse. slapped in the face with the ineptitude of <laughs> yeah. George Lucas. I feel like this is also the episode where like Pad- Padley, wow, I said Padley Portman. Padley I tried to, Portman. I tried to make Padme and Natalie one word, and that's what happened. Mm, Padley Portman. I feel like that's Padley. the one where Padley Portman actually like came the closest to giving a crap about Star Wars, what she was doing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, she her her connection with Anakin is a little bit more believable here than she mm. is in the movies, but mm-hmm. it's still well because they have a kid. And you just you just infer that they've been living together for a while. Yeah. yeah. So you're like you just, you're like whatever I'll take this. Yeah. I'll take it. These movies mm-hmm. are so fucking bad. Like, I'll take it. <laughs> That's for... why people talk about like you know a love story between Ray and Finn in these new Star Wars movies. Oh, yeah. Like no thank you. Mm-hmm. We had a Star Wars romance once. <laughs> it fizzled. It failed. It died. Yeah. Star Wars is one for two in this romance department because mm-hmm. we'll always have Han and Leia, but yeah. but this is is a hot mess. And we'll always have Luke and Leia. <laughs> for, those, for that awkward kiss, yeah, awkward <laughs> Jamie just, Lannister, Cersei uh, Lannister no. kiss. Yeah. Nobody ever mentions the second kiss. The second kiss, yeah, where he, uh, where they rescue yeah. him on the Millennium Falcon, and mm-hmm. then he's like in yeah, the yeah. little pod, and then she like kisses him again. Nobody ever mentions it. Whoops, still creepy. And they've already like sort of hinted that she's his sister because Yoda's made that. No, there is a brother. Yeah, just a smidge. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Full Jamie and Cersei Lannister. Uh, yeah, and Luke is super proud of himself for one upping Han. I mean, he got. Kissed by the hottest girl in the galaxy. Yeah. At least the whole <laughs> franchise at that point. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's the one girl in the entire franchise. This is correct. Yeah. No <laughs> offense, you... Carrie Fisher was very attractive. I mean, I'm just you... saying she was the one woman in that we're, entire You don't know what We're not going to count you... Emperor. Oh, oh, you're right. God damn it. Oh, <laughs> the milf hunter in me is. Smoking <laughs> hot. Smoking yeah. hot when the stormtroopers got done with oh. her. Oh, you son of a bitch. I'm a bad man. You went for it. Uh, so, you know, I respect you for going for it. Too. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was the hottest thing in the galaxy. Yeah. Okay, so the one thing I want to know is everybody says Star Wars is for kids. 
But is this for does kids? Ev- does everybody say that? Well, I mean, the, the movie where to? Anakin basically gets taken to hell, to this lava mm. planet where he's burning and tortured <laughs> by his own bad decisions at the end. The that... veiled metaphors. Yeah, it's it's very Dante-esque. It's mm. very is, Inferno. Is this for kids, though? Mm. Like, would you let a kid, like a seven-year-old, watch somebody be, like, mercilessly set on fire yeah. and, like, burned? And, and that's why I think yeah. I'm like, well, it's not necessarily for kids. Mm. I mean, maybe it's not that sequence, at least. I feel like... Natalie Portman's like, response to this is, is sort of helpful here. She always tells people, like, no, I would never show my kids the Star Wars movies I was in because mm. I die brutally at the end of them. Uh, this yeah, is not, yeah. like, children's fodder. Mm-hmm. So it really... I'll say not. this, yeah. just on a tiny tangent. People always say Star Wars is for kids. I don't think it's for kids. Mm. I think it's um, accessible to kids. I wouldn't sure. call Jurassic Park a kids movie. I wouldn't call Back to the Future a kids movie. I wouldn't call Indiana Jones kids movies. Mm. These all fall into the same category of things you loved when you were a kid, yeah. but you still love them an equal amount when you're an adult. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. they're probably uh, they're they're probably for the most part wholesome enough mm-hmm. that they're not entirely inappropriate for a kid. None mm-hmm. of these movies has like specifically like a, a sex scene. Yeah, basically is probably what would what is making these people say like, Oh yeah, it's for kids. Cause nobody bangs in them. Like yeah. that's the whole, that's probably like the one requirement for like a lot of, I don't know, Americans to say like, Oh yeah, is it yeah. appropriate for kids? Oh yeah, there's no sex or anything. So, okay. So this guy just, you know, gets his appendages burned off and uh, turned into a robot monster at the end. And a woman brutally dies. Yeah, that's fine. Kids can watch that. It's I cool. mean, you can, you can pair it to some of the stuff Andy just listed mm-hmm. where like in Raiders of the Lost Ark where dudes get their faces melted yeah, off yeah, yeah. or but in the thing Temple of Doom where men have their hearts removed that one was rated R though chest. that one no yeah. it was PG oh, was it PG yeah but it led to the PG-13 okay. okay yeah but the thing is like I would say even that is accessible to kids like kids can handle Raiders of the Lost Ark oh sure yeah, yeah. I mean maybe not a, maybe not a four year old but like, I mean, yeah, like yeah. millennial parents would not show their kids that stuff I mean uh, I mean yeah. I would but I'm never gonna Kids, yeah, so I mean, matter. maybe checked out millennial parents would just be like, oh. isn't that all millennial parents? Do? Yeah, well, I mean, no, because there's the, no. like the different extremes. There's the helicopter parents, and then there's the checked right. out ones. That's yeah. fair. I, I don't know but, which ones outnumber the others, but yeah, definitely, there's the two extremes. I don't want to. But you get my <laughs> point, though. Like people go, like, oh, this is a children's franchise or whatever, mm. and I'm like, but can kids even really follow the story all that well? Like, I mean, certainly not the prequels because they don't make any sense. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I, I just say this: this is accessible to children. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's children's entertainment yeah, yeah in the there's... same way that the batman movies i wouldn't say those are kids movies yeah well, that's, that's, the, show, that's yeah. the difference between like kids entertainment and all ages entertainment yeah you know like, well i there's... wouldn't even necessarily say these are like all ages entertainment because mm-hmm. i would say like like if i had a kid i would wait till they were the right age to watch star wars yeah you know, i wouldn't be like three years old here's the phantom menace yeah, well i would right. never do that <laughs> but here's <laughs> unless know. they did something wrong you yeah know, here's, this is here's your punishment but like kids entertainment is like deliberately simple mm. i think this is simple only because the themes stand out more yeah yeah that's the point yeah you know? when you're when you're dealing with more like yeah high concept archetypal stuff like you don't need to be but you think about it, like, I think we even talked about this on an earlier episode where, like, people are like, The Hobbit is a children's book. There's no oh, fucking sure. kid in the world that would read that book and enjoy there it. There is some no. stuffy, uptight British kid that is okay. all about The everybody Hobbit since besides, he was, like, four years old Everybody or besides Veruca Salt, like, that's, that's, like, a British kid from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, yeah. That everybody works. besides Veruca Salt, like, no kid would read that. But, like, it's appropriate for kids. Sure, yeah, yeah. It's got things in it kids would... Yeah, a kid can read it and not be traumatized. Yeah. I don't know, Gandalf does stab a dude through the back. Oh, yeah. It's so awesome. Yeah, but kids can handle that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they can handle Nazis' faces being melted off, yeah, they can handle a little... If they can handle space play. Nazis yeah. and the conflict of uh, ideologies yeah. between space Nazis and space uh, monks. And some light twin cests between Luke and Leia. Mm, yeah, very light. <laughs> it goes right over their head. Yeah, <clears throat> so light it goes right over their head. <laughs> uh, I think we've pretty much covered everything in these. We have. Does what anybody have any last points? We're they... we going to talk about the best prequel, Rogue One. I don't get to do my Forrest Whitaker impression. What? <laughs> Save the rebellion. Save the dream. Okay. No, I'm kidding. As a I'm quick runner-up, <laughs> can we talk about Rogue One? Do you care? Sure. If, if the panelists I, are up for it, I've seen it. I'm up for <laughs> that's, it. That's one I've seen. Okay. Um. Do we like Rogue One, or is it kind of hit and miss? Because there are a lot of people who say, like, oh, I think we can really go back to it. I, I mean, there's a lot of parts of it that I feel are boring. In that case, I'm never going back to it. Oh, that's true. <sighs> yeah, I, I saw it once, and I'm just like, yeah, this is cool, fine. I've seen it a couple times. Okay. It's it's 
it holds up. It seems reasonable. It's, I like it. It's yeah. boring yeah. in parts. Like yeah. it yeah. does. There are parts where I'm like, why is this here? Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, like it's. I actually think it is of pretty much any Star Wars movie besides, you know, four and five. It's the best looking Star Wars movie. Like yes, it yes. cinematography yeah. wise, it, it, it is fantastic, yeah. and in mm-hmm. a way that um, and I've. I'm freely accepting that people on other podcasts, and I've heard other reviewers say the same thing, but even in Force Awakens, well, not so much Force Awakens, but like The Last Jedi, like the ships and stuff do look a little CGI, a little plastic you know, like there are, but like Rogue One, I don't know why, but it looks like all that <clears throat> shit is right there. It's because it's, it's, it's Gareth Edwards is a great cinematographer. Mm, yeah. yeah, it's super gritty, the galaxy has a very lived-in feel yeah. in this one, mm-hmm. which is what makes it so close to the original, mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. is that it's in... It's visually the same Star Wars that yeah, George Lucas. Yes. And, there's there's some and grime on those ships, you know. Yeah. It's a little dusty, but I like you know, it. Also, it's not spick and span. Because even like, um, well, obviously you have the original trilogy, which is the Star Wars that everybody knows and tries to imitate. Mm-hmm. You have the prequel trilogy, which is George Lucas's singular vision, and then you have the Force Awakens and the Last Jedi, which I'm not gonna I'm not criticizing those movies, mm-hmm. but those are J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson yeah. trying to imitate. The magic of those films. Yeah. So they're all filmed in like, and I'm talking about like physically, like cinematography wise, they're all filmed in a very similar fashion. Okay. What I like about like Rogue One is that it's filmed and edited in a slightly different way. Like it yeah. feels like a different filmmaker finally came in and made it. Yeah. Like there's that battle on, um, I don't know, Jeddah, the right before they get captured. But like, and it just cuts yeah. to like a little girl crying or something. Mm. I was like, that's not something that every filmmaker would put in there. Mm. That's something that Gareth Edwards put in there. Oh, yeah. That scene's so good too. The mm-hmm. fact that you get a rebellion breaking out in the middle of a marketplace where neither the good guys nor the bad care if innocents get gunned down. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my god, this is like Fallujah or Kabul. This yeah. is a Star Wars movie for our time. Yeah. It's like yeah. actually mirroring the sort of conflict yeah. that we it's... see in our world, and it, that just makes it so much more accessible. And it really, yeah. It, what this movie succeeds the best in doing, I think, is showing us like the cost of this rebellion. It's not pretty, as yeah. you know, Cassie and Andor's entire story arc shows us. Yeah. It's um, it's in this morally gray area. It's made up of a bunch of different factions who don't necessarily agree with each other. Yeah, yeah. And that, I mean, it's just so much like what we see in Syria, for instance. We've got mm-hmm. like seven or eight different political movements saying, "Well, we all hate Bashar al-Assad, mm-hmm. but we can't agree on much else." Yeah, yeah. So it really, it, it felt. And that's the thing. Realistic. Is, Star Wars relevant. can yeah. do that. Yeah. Star Wars can do that. Yes. You know, I know a lot of people, there are people that say, like, Star Wars is for kids, mm-hmm. and it's sure. that's where it should remain. Well, yeah. But, like, what if somebody said that about Batman? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What if somebody said that about, uh, like, The Punisher or something? Yeah. Like, or Daredevil. <laughs> Daredevil. <laughs> the Punisher's for kids. Well, yeah. I mean, well. <laughs> he, premiered, he premiered in Spider-Man. Yeah. What if somebody yeah. just said, like, oh, he's just going to stay in Spider-Man? Or, yeah. like, Daredevil. Yeah. Like, what mm-hmm. if somebody said, like, no, Frank Miller. Don't try and yeah. do any deeper story yeah. or anything. Like, don't don't kill anybody. They yeah. need to all stay alive. They all need to stay happy. Yeah. So, like, I'm perfectly fine with them <laughs> trying to do like more adult Star Wars stuff because you know what? Most of the fans are adults now anyway. Right? You know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Yeah. And the, and the kids are just gonna think it's cool. Yeah. Because right, it's more right. adult. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Rogue One's gonna is gonna you know hold up with kids no matter what because you've got those cool action sequences on the beach yeah. and in the deserts and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. All right, and now we can look forward to the next prequel, Solo. Star Wars. Nice! Deception! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to break out the Force with a yes. one more time. I had to. Well played. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have you back on here after Solo comes out. <laughs> yes. And we can I, just either I mock it mercilessly or just sit around here kind of quietly going like, oh, that was not Yeah, Ron mm-hmm. Howard did okay. Yeah, yeah it was okay. I will only be fully satisfied with Solo if Ron Howard does Arrested Development-esque narration. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want a really weird, out-of-place Clint Howard cameo. Oh, uh, yeah. Because he's going to have a yeah. cameo in there. Yeah, okay. he will. Yeah. I just mm. want it to be really out of place. He plays Chewbacca's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Mala? They're bringing Mala back to the new canon? No, you know what? Even better. He's lumpy. Oh, okay. Oh, no. no. Wait, lumpy or itchy? Itchy is the grandpa that watches porn. Itchy's right? the horny okay. grandpa, yeah. yeah, yeah lumpy, yeah, okay. Lumpy's the son, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, well, he's, I, would he be short enough to play that? I mean, mm. I mean, I guess the guy who plays Chewbacca is pretty tall. He I can mean, hunch. Forced perspective. Yeah, you could, you yeah. could shoot that in yeah, there. Yeah, he can hunch. He's only going to be in there for like one or two scenes. But... I mean, is, is Elijah Wood small enough to <laughs> play a hobbit? I mean, Well, no, now I'm going to be really mean... fucking disappointed if this <laughs> doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, careful there. If fan theories are what, like, destroyed The Last Jedi for a lot of people. Mm. Okay. Well, I hope we didn't destroy Solo, a Star Wars story <laughs> yeah. for anybody. We didn't jinx it, hopefully. Yeah. Is there anything else anybody wants to add? 
long live Ewan McGregor for making these movies at least a little watchable. Let's yeah. please get him an Obi Wan spin off movie so he can make yeah, a good yeah. movie. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in that. Absolutely. Watching yeah. him, Ewan McGregor just sort of go crazy in the <laughs> desert for 20 years? Absolutely. Yeah. The, yeah. I'd be Logan with Obi Wan. Log Obi Wan. Yeah. <laughs> and I would be all in. Oh, yeah. Who's, who's, um, and then Luke becomes XC3 then? No, it's mm -hmm. just like that, that. It's just that tone. I know. As, yeah, unless you want to fuck up canon. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs canon? Yeah, right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway. We good? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, think we're so. good. Thank you for listening, everybody. Yes. Say Th goodbye. To Thanks for being here, Ben. Yes, my thank pleasure. You for being here, ben. Thanks for asking. I'm sure I will not be asked back again. So oh, was, I'm sure you will. It was a pleasure to be here. I'm sure you will. Watch, watch the comments section, and we'll see uh, if you come back or not. Yes, vote in the comment section. <laughs> the comment section. Yeah, we'll get one vote. <laughs> I promise not to create a bunch of Gmail accounts yeah, I was gonna and say. just spam YouTube comments. <laughs> you will be back. But until then, thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll see you next time.